Captain Steve, and today, chums, we're going to be exploring this pretty darn gnarly planet. It is pretty darn sweet, this planet. Right, okay, so I guess if I'm going to explore the planet, the first thing I should really do is jump out of the ship. First, I just want to take a look at the skyline through my ship. Look at that blue sort of tint over there. Let's just, just jump on out and make sure it's not my visor. No, look at that tint to the sky. What time of day is it, you might want to ask? It is. Oh, we're just about to have sunrise, chums. Sunrise! It's going to come up at about 6 in the morning, which is freaking ace. So, yeah, wh where is the sun? Where are you, sunny sun sun? Hard to say. But, yeah, we, we will capture it as it comes up. But this is looking awesome. Right, anyway, I need to bring this up on YouTube while I'm waiting for the sun to rise. Let's just hit that. Yep, my audio sounds good. You can hear me, which is cool. Because on the PlayStation 5 pad, there is actually a mute button. Which, if you hit it by accident, it mutes you. Hello there, Power Yapper! Welcome aboard, you're first into the chat. You know what, Power Yapper? Since you are first into the chat, I'm going to give you an air grab. That's all for you. Heck yes, a fistful of oxygen. Dutch 66, welcome aboard, sir. Hello there, Dutch. Nice to have you on board. Right, okay, so let's see. The sun should be coming up. It's gone six. Yeah, the sun should be here. Hello there, Birdie Man Birdface. I'm going to scan you, Birdie Man Birdface. Take that, you. Hello there, Mr. Kettle. The Olive Channel. Hello, YouTube. Well, hello there, the Olive Channel. Right oh. How's it going, Steve? It's going good, Olive Channel. My missus is a massive fan of olives. She loves olives. She can't get enough of olives. She loves eating olives. Right, I guess. Let's have a look. I took her to a tapas bar. And uh, she liked the olives there that much. She called the manager in and she asked where the olives came from. And she, he actually gave her a jar of olives. Really nice guy. Yeah, so, yeah, that was Tapas Bar in Northamptonshire. Really nice. It's called Les Olives, actually. Right, okay, so, let's, um, yeah, so th this is the sun coming up. Now, the reason why I'm on this planet, chums, is it's really bizarre. If you saw my ideas video, you would see just how bizarre this planet is. If I can get to the grass, you see it's blue, but when I actually reach it, it turns red as I actually reach the grass. It's a bizarre planet. It changes colour as you move around. Freaking weird. Yeah, and I've landed up here mainly because there's like a little gnarly river, or a waterway anyway. Um, let me see if I can find it. It's, it's, I, I flew over it as I was landing. Uh, it's down there in the crevice. Okay, so just behind where my ship is. Sweet. Okay. And down here. I flew over this when I was just um, about to broadcast. And I thought, you know what, I'd land there. But look at that. Isn't that cool? There's like a little cave complex. And then there's a river in there. Oh, there's an underground cave with a pond in. This is pretty dang gnarly. Well, let's have a little underground exploration while we're waiting for the sun to rise. Sun to rise early in the morning. Sweet. Look at that. That is so cool. Isn't that cool? Bye. I've got school. Oh, okay. Yeah, I keep forgetting time zones are different all over the world, aren't they? Well, enjoy school! Slutamondo, the Olive Channel! Hello, little cow donkey type thing with a hammerhead. How are you? I'm a... Can I scan this dude? I think I already have scanned this dude. Well, I did put the coordinates out on my channel the other day when I was doing my ideas video. So it could be that other people have come here now and scanned these places. I just got bit by a freaking plant. Well, let's head on out now that it's actually daytime and we'll have a better look around. What a cool planet. It really is awesome, isn't it? Look at that lake. That is so cool. That is very cool. Okay, how's it going, Steve? That's good. Evening, Mr. Kettle. Yes, howdy, doody, diddly, dandy there, Mr. Kettle. Right, okay, so maybe we could scan some of these plants and things. Dunno. Right, coolio. But what a cool planet this is. So I just figured that we could maybe explore this planet and maybe look at the neighbouring planets inside of this system. And, um, yeah, it, it's pretty cool. Oh, wow, look at that creature. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Howdy there, Beeble Bum. Welcome aboard, sir. Uh, rename and upload. Let's rename this then. Right, well, this this looks kind of very sort of moosey type, doesn't it? And we just add moose jump into the channel. So here we go, moose. Gaming. Oh, it doesn't allow you to put the moose. I've got to put a double zero instead. Look at that. I've got, got to sneak it in. Yeah, moose. Gaming. Let's put that in there. Lovely. And the jubbly. Kapow. 
some moose gaming and we've got this chap wow that is it looks like it's got a bumblebee backside you know what that one's going to be a beeble bum there we go beeble I don't know about the head though. I mean, that that doesn't quite tie in with Beeble Bum, but there we go. It's got a it's got a bum's backside. It's a Beeble Bum. There we are. Pow! Yeah, look at that. It definitely has got a Beeble Bum. Right, so here we go. Let's go over to here. Oh my days! That looks like a phallus with hooves. That's um. Oh dear. <laughs> well, hello there, Vanilla. Hello there, Nell. Um, we call this one the Olive. <laughs> He's gone to school. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. The Olive Channel. There we go. Okay. <laughs> it, uh, yeah. It's kind of olive coloured. There we go. Olive Channel. There we go. There we are. He'll probably watch this later. And go, what the fudge? There we go. Here we go. R1. Oh no. R1. Pow. Done. <laughs> and oh, we've got a tentacle monster. Well, I know that um, Nell plays Call of Cthulhu, which is kind of like... Oh my, <laughs> he's still here! He's still here! There you go, you just got to mortalise the Olive Channel. There we go. So, here we go. Nell, I'm going to call this one Vanilla. Uh, I'll put your name in full, because, you know, not a lot of people call you Nell. Well, people that know you call you Nell, but there you go. Vanilla, nice one. Vanilla, you play Call of Cthulhu, which is very octopusy-like, isn't it? Not pretty... Oh, that would have been better for Moose, wouldn't it? You know, it's got more of the Moosey Horns. The Moosey Horns, nice. Really nice. Who else have we got in here that I haven't paid tribute to? Dutch 66. Let's do that one. Dutch 66. Actually, we could call this one Mr. Kettle because it almost looks like a kettle. It looks like it's got a stout and looks like it's got a handle, doesn't it? There we go, Mr. Kettle. We'll go for Mr. Kettle on this one. Mr. Kettle. There we are. There we are, Mr. Kettle. Done. And there we are. Look at this. That's a lot. That is a freaking cool creature. Highly social, really cool creature, that one. I love that one. That one is so awesome. Okay, so Dutch 60, this one can be Dutch. This one can be Dutch 66. There we are, Dutch 66. What a cool creature that is. Nice one. And have we had anybody else join the chat that I can use? Oh, we've got Inside Vortex. Inside Vortex. Okay. Well, you know that little underground cow that we saw, the hammerhead, the inside vortex. There we go. There we are. Inside vortex. Bum, 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 bum. Inside vortex. There we go. There we are. Don't say I don't give you anything. <laughs> Inside Vortex keeps dropping me links to some awesome stuff inside of the NMSA hub. Now, I would like to say that this is in the NS NMSA hub, but as you know, the NMSA is in the 905. This is 904, like 9.6 or something. It's so close to the hub. It's right on the fringe of the No Man's Sky Adventures hub, the NMSA hub. And uh, yeah, it's a beautiful planet. And it, it is it is amazing to walk around this planet. Beautiful. You've seen my profile picture. I can't work out what your profile picture is. It looks like some sort of demented duck. I have no idea what that is. Oh, oh we've got uh, Mirna in the house. At Mira Miller. Hello there. Good day. Good day to you, sir. Right, or, or madam. Right, so let's uh, have a look around and see what we can find. See if there's any other creatures that we can scan them on the gate. Let's have a look at the discoveries page. It can give us a bit of a clue on where we can find these creatures. Okay, so we've got another ground that's always active. We've got a flying that's always active. And we've got some underwater creatures. Okay, there's some water. Let's go under it. The Mash Smash is in the house and James MC. Awesome. Well, welcome aboard. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And we've got Beho. Hi, Captain. Well, hello there. B0HR. Yeah, I, I, I'm just going to call you Beau. There we go. Um, Bazira. Bazira, her. I have no idea how you pronounce this. I can go see him. You can indeed. If you do want to go see him, there are the coordinates in the bottom left corner right now. I'll read them out to you. Triple Eagle. That's a triple frickin' eagle. Followed by a Triforce, a Sandy Set, a Y Force or a Flux Capacitor, followed by an Eclipse and a Waypoint, a Dragon Fly, a Beetle, a Whale, and a Reflection. Yarn! Heck yes. 
Oh, we've got Scottish Rod in the house. Welcome, Scottish Rod. So Scottish Rod, Damash Smash, and Moose Gaming have all got channels, and they all put out No Man's Sky content. So, yeah, if you haven't already subbed to them or hit them up, please do. They're fantastic people, and they've got some really cool channels and content. And, um, yeah, something I would say is that if you just head on over to my channel and about page, on there are all the people that I've subscribed to in the No Man's Sky universe that actually make No Man's Sky content. And the great thing about that channel wall is they've got the subscribe buttons right next to them. You just go bump, 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 bump. Saves you a heck of a lot of channel hopping. You can do it all in one freaking hit. Yeah. It's nice. It's like a catalogue of No Man's Sky content creators. Oh, here we go. We've got some fisherman fish fish. Hello. Oh, no. It's a squid. Like a squiddyman squid squid. Okay. Right. Okay. Well, we're, we're going to have to name this something, aren't we? Here we go. Let's rename this one then. Sweet. Let's go for... <laughs> I think that we'd call this one... Yeah, Adam Mac. We we'll go for Adam Mac on this one. Adam Mac. Chikapow. Now, something that we've come to the conclusion, well, something that we're going to be doing from here, well, something I'm going to be doing from here on in, is you know all those little creatures that pop out of the ground? They're almost vertical. They look like, um, you know, compare the meerkat.com. They've got their tongue hanging out and crazy eyes. I'm going to start calling those Damash Smash. If I come across one of those, I'm going to call them Damash or Damash Smash. Because they look like, you know, the little whack-a-moles that you smack on the face. But you mash smash, you know? Perfect. Yeah, and the crabs, I always call those Scottish rods. So, hopefully we'll come across a crab creature underwater, and I can call it mash smash. I mean, Scottish rod, what am I freaking saying? Ah, oh, I've got hiccups again. I don't know why I keep getting hiccups. Oh, uh, yeah. Odd. You cure one thing and another thing breaks, doesn't it? You know, I had a really bad stomach and I've taken all this stomach medication and now the stomach medication seems to have screwed up my freaking esophagus or something because I, I keep getting acid reflux now and uh, freaking hiccups for no reason. So, yeah, great fun. Great fun being me. What's the, what's the sentinels like on this planet? Sentinels are frequent, but they, they, they don't seem to be hassling me. It's a beautiful planet, this, chums. It really is. I haven't come across something like this before either that changes colour as you're walking around it like this does. It's pretty insane. OK, well, we've got some of the flying creatures, but apparently there's one other airborne fauna I have yet to discover. But you know what? I'm going to go somewhere where there's a little bit more water. And hopefully, hopefully we can get some more of the underwater creatures or we could just go to one of the neighboring planets you know what we go to one of the neighboring planets chums let's do that rather than spend too much longer here just sort of discovering and naming creatures because i think we've got quite a plethora of creature yards let's go to the discoveries page let's see if we can rename this planet here we go so here we go let's go on to there and i'm going to call this red and blue color change yeah, why not? Red and blue colour change would kind of do the trick. Red and blue. Actually, I'll call it red and blue haze. There we are. Red and blue haze. There we go. Red and blue haze. Pow! Done! Which is pretty awesome. Now, this is in an uncharted area of space. Hence why it's got this that looks like a bad game of, um, you know, what's it called? Whether you have to go across the board. I can't remember what it's bloody called now. But anyway, let's go and have a look at some of these other planets. This one looks unusual, doesn't it? This one with the yellow sort of masses on, the turquoisey planet. That one looks quite cool. We'll go and have a look. Now, I would say that the uncharted areas of space hold some very, very interesting planets. So, if we do manage to do all of this system in this stream, or at least the planets we want to look at, then, um, yeah, I might jump back into the NMSA hub and look for an uncharted system there and see if we can find anything else that's crazy and cool. Righto, let's have a look around. Dilly dee. Other planet, where are you? What are you? You look like a Malteser. Let's have a look at that one. Ooh. Metallurgic planet. Cadmium, gold, and cobalt. We're going to go and have a look at what a, a metallurgic planet is. I'm imagining it's one of those trophy planets that doesn't have water, but I just can't envisage in my head which one it is. So we'll head down. It could be the one with all the gears and cogs. We might not even land. We might just take a little look and then venture back out again. Because I've usually only got one creature if it is the one that I'm thinking of. Okay. 
nice one now thank you very much for putting links there to Beeble and Dimash and so forth and so on thanking you awesome hit those people up people if you want if you like my content you're gonna love Scottish Rod you're gonna love Dimash Smash and Beeble is also an awesome base builder and content creator awesome chap as well in the verse I think he's just hit over 3,000 subscribers now which is fantastic he's, he's climbing rather rapidly and good for him He's put a lot of channel, a lot of effort into it, into his channel, and helping the community learning how to base build. The guy's pretty damn freaking awesome. So yeah, he's also a, a, one of the founding members of like the PBF. Awesome guy. Okay, so we've got all this going on down here. Yeah, I know this one. Awesome. Let's get out of here. We've seen we've seen a lot of them. Okay, Coolio. Right. So we got a planet hiding behind a planet there because those rings I don't they don't look attached. Okay, let's just head on over this way and see if we can see that ringed planet behind the planet. Let's do that. Radio, Power Yapper, Cheerio everyone, dinner's ready. Well, go and enjoy Power Yapper and thanks for being first into the chat, my friend. Do you want to spin this around? Let's have, oh, it's a blue planet with a ring on it. What sort of blue planet is that, though? Is it going to let me scan it? There we are. Oh, no, it moved off of it just at the last second. When I pressed in L3, scanner needs to recharge. Let's do that again. Be a bit more careful this time, Steve. It's a freezing cold planet. Okay. Right, we'll leave that one, I think, for now. I mean, sometimes you can go to these freezing planets and they can have massive great big mountain ranges on them. Apparently, there's a planet somewhere around here. Oh, there we go. Is that the green and yellow type turquoise one that I saw earlier? I don't think it is. Star Bulb? Paradise? Heck yes, we'll go check that one out. Let's go and have a look here. Joby Cummins lurking at work before my client comes in. Well, Corleo, nice one, Joby. Cool, cool. Let's go head on down. Yeah, hello and welcome. They sound amazing inside. Okay. Cool. Let's uh, head on down. Let's head on down. Bider. We've got Bider in the house. Hello there, Bider Beck. Bider Beck also has a channel too. Wow. So many content creators in the house, people. Yeah, you can farm cobalt, can you? I mean, I usually get my cobalt out of caves. Um, but yeah, maybe. I've, I think on some of the trophy planets, sometimes they have different different minerals and everywhere at rare else. It's loading, Steve. What's loading? It seems to be a heater. And the dragons in the book like to keep warm. Okay, nice. John McNone. Thanks, that's 66. Meet you there, Steve. Thank you. Okay, cool, yeah. Cheers now. I don't know whether I've got my multiplayer settings on right now. Let me just check. I might have. Let's go to network. Yeah, it's invite only, but I have got my multiplayer on. So if you did come here, you would be here ambiently. Um, but yeah, the reason why I haven't turned it on um, is mainly to sort of... Yeah. Just, oh, I've just saw that people are having buffering issues. Which is a bit odd. No, I, I haven't got no buffering issues my end. I'm watching it at the moment. It's on my screen. And I'm not seeing this buffer at all my end. So I don't know what's going on. I've seen a lot of people having buffering problems. What you might want to do is hit the little cog on your screen and drop the quality down or something. If you've got it on auto, my PlayStation is streaming at quite a high quality at the moment. Um, so yeah, you might want to just um, change your quality to maybe... 360p or something like that if you're watching on your phone you're not going to notice much if you're watching on a big tv yeah it's going to be freaking a bit shite and look at that we've got a scottish rod right there let's scan him he's like a flying scottish rod but we get him in there anyway what the fudge is this? what the heck is that that is so cute well oh, we got that one look at his mouth hold on i've got to have a better look at this little chap let's have a little zoom in He's like a little mini T-Rex with horns. Let's put the sun in the sky. Oh, he's so sweet. He's got little ears as well. Hello. That is so cute, isn't it? Okay, cool. We get round to, um, you know, uh, naming these in a bit. Ah, uh, cool. We've got one of these predatory type cat type creatures. Pretty awesome. Let's scan this dude over there. Kapow. That's a shark cat. Nice, okay. Well, they, they, I haven't got any of the predatory markers appearing, so they're not going to bite me, which is pretty cool. Now let's scan that. 
Is that the secondary Scottish rod there? Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Cool. Well, this is quite a beautiful planet, isn't it? I'm liking all the little shrooms everywhere. Very cool. It's like um, a fungal lush. It's it's really quite lovely. Really quite a pretty planet. And we've got we've got water here as well. Oh, we've got bird life as well. Yeah, airborne. Nice. Let's get him. Pow! Scanned. Right, let's catch up with some of this um, Wacker Smash. Nice one, my pleasure. Cool, cool. Yeah, thanks again there. OT, any Brits here want to tell me what an AGA is? I'm reading a British author's book. An AGA? <laughs> no, not a clue. Um, cheers, Nell. And I'm British. I have no idea what AGA is. Um, yeah. It's a type of oven, John. Oh, okay, fair enough, there we go. John McNote, a cooker. Oh, an arga! An arga! Right, okay, yeah, it doesn't stay. It's an arga, of course it is. I'll meet you there, Steve. Yeah, so an arga is like a, a, it's a cast iron oven. They're really old. You usually get them in like farm kitchens and places like that. It's loading, Steve, cool. It seems to be a heat up, yeah, cool. Oh, now I know why, it would, yeah. It's a multi-hub and oven machine. They used to use wood burdening uh, the most gas or electric now. Heck yes. They're even a microwave these days, you know what I mean? Right, let's start scrolling down. We've done that one. Arga. Cool. Nice view. Sweet. Yeah, like a Rayburn. Sweet. Coolio. Now I know what you were getting at. I missed that comment. Yeah, Coolio. Uh, oh, we got Madfish Magpie in the house. Awesome. I could run all the way down to that lake, couldn't I? We could have a look at the underwater creatures. But you know what? The underwater creatures haven't had much love, have they? To be fair, they're pretty much the same underwater creatures that we saw pre-generations. This planet, though, is beautiful. It is quite a wondrous planet. Oh, look at that. We've got ourselves one of these turtle cows. Get scanned, turtle cow. Right. I think I've got quite a decent array of fauna that I can rename after you, you guys. We've got Normog Gaming that's just joined. You can be a turtle cow, Normog. There we go. Normog. Oh, no. Normog. Gaming. Normog. Gaming. Chikapow. Done. Sweet. And here we go. Well, we've got Night Penguin in the house. Here you go. Night Penguin. I know penguins can't fly, but this is about the closest thing that we can get to uh, Night Penguin, I think, isn't it? There we go. Night Penguin. Night penguin, night, night penguin, done, dilly done. And this this has got to be a Scottish rod, hasn't it? You know, there you go, Scottish rod, kapow. Oh, that's that would have made a better night penguin, wouldn't it? It's got a freaking penguin's head. Oh, darn it, night penguin. I cut, I, I, I rushed that, didn't I? I should have looked through the creatures first. Okay, all right, sod it. There's going to be two night penguins. Yeah, because why not? Fudge, yes. There you go. Two night penguins can share the same world. What the fudge is this? This is a shark cat. Day penguin. <laughs> Joby. What a freaking good idea. Yeah, okay. Right. We're going to call this one Joby. There we go. Joby. Or Joby. There we go. Chikapow. Joby. Done. Okay, cool. I do like that. That is quite cool. It's like a wild boar crossed with a, with a shark. That's pretty mental. What the fudge happened to you? Your legs have mer merged into each other. You've got legs coming out of your knees. That's just wrong on so many friggin' levels. Okay. Um, we're going to have that one as Mr. Profusion. I mean, it looks like his frickin' legs have been profused together. There you go. Profusion. Mr. Profusion. There we are. Cool, cool. And we got this guy. He is freaking awesome. I love all the little spikes on his backside as well. It's like he's wearing some sort of gnarly crown or something. He is so cool. You know what? He can be. He can be. He can be. Dan King. Why the heck not? Since it looks like he's wearing a crown. There we go. Dan King. Dilly Dan. Dan King. Yeah, I think this is. Oh, look at him. <laughs> <laughs> He's putting his head between his legs, sticking his ass in the air. Right, uh, brilliant. Awesome. I love that one. 
I'm not so keen on his write-up though. This pr pr produces vile stench. <laughs> I was just looking at his rectum a second ago. Hopefully that's not where it comes from. But there we go. What an awesome creature that one is. Lovely. Okay, so if we go to our Discoveries outer page, that was the planet I wanted to see. So I think we've seen the planets in this system that I wanted to investigate. So, yeah, I think we'll head on off and we'll head back into the 905 and we'll see if we can find an uncharted area of space and see if we can um, do something there. Oh, look at that. JRC has joined the group. I don't know how. <laughs> He's invite only. And I don't recognise the name from my friends list. But then again, my friends list has grown rapidly since I've done all those sort of collabs with like Jason Plays and Zane. Uh, you know, the events that we did the other year and stuff and all the base building. Yeah, my friends list has gone freaking mental. So let's uh, go out here and let's see if we can find a place inside of the 905. So is that going the right way? No, it's not. You know, uh, story of my life. Okay, let's go this way and let's... Oh, hyperdrive has no fuel. Of course it doesn't. I'm in the wrong ship. Ah, some biscuits. Okay, well, we're going to go back down the land and uh, we're going to pick up... Send? Send? What? What was that? I don't know what that was. That was a different sort of message. I haven't seen that one before. It said send a hostile message. What the hell? Okay, well, we go down here. I swap to my other ship. Oh, okay, we've got the hostile ships in range. They're coming after me. Leg it, run. Run like the wind, Captain Steve, before they get you. Okay, let's go, let's go. Yeah, local enemy disruption. I'm not in the right ship for tackling bad guys. This is a B class, and I've only just got it yesterday, so it's got no modules in it at all. So, Captain Steve the Magnificent has engaged pirates. Quick, touchdown. Call in my anvil of destiny, and we'll show those pirates a freaking lesson that they won't forget. Okay, here we go. Ba -bum 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 -bum. Chicka -pow. I don't think they're after me. I can't see any laser fire coming at me anyway. Alright, oh, nice one. We're going to get in my ship and we're going to fly on out. Nice one. We'll do inside Vortex. Need to stuff to record today. Nice one. Cool, yeah. Alright, let's head on off. There's just a lot of people sending, saying hello to everyone and stuff, I think. Are, are, are the pirates still after me? I don't think they are. Darn it. Okay. Well, anyway, let's um, use this. I should have enough warp fuel now. Should have checked, really, shouldn't I? But there we go. Let's head this way. And let's look for... We're in the 905 now. Great. There's a red one. Data run available. Perfect. It has water as well. We're going to go there. And we're going to see if we can find something awesome. Just stopping to give you a view count and drop a like on my lunch. Nice one. Well, thank you, USAF. Thank you. Awesome. Cool. I hope everyone is doing well. Doing great, thanking you. Jackpot Ninja in the house. Nothing worse than being under attack and having to install weapons to return the fire. Yeah, I usually just install the uh, rockets if I get sort of really caught up because the rockets seem to do OP sort of level damage. So they're pretty cool. Right, so we've got a gamma root planet there. Okay, interesting. But not overly. But then again, that planet that I was on that was all that red and blue colour, it didn't look all that interesting. A lava planet. I do like lava planets, which are quite cool. But let's have a look and see if we can find anything that looks a little bit mysterious on the old scanner Rooney. Planet of Light. Is that the one with the light fissures? Is that a light fissure planet? Let me just go check this one out. Let's have a look at this one. Is this a light fissure plant with all the trophies all over it that give beams of light up into the sky? I think they've added other sort of quirky names for some of these planets just to sort of tempt you down to them. Yes, it's that one. Okay, seen a billion of them. Right, okay, let's go on out then. And uh, let's have a look around. Hmm. So, you know, you're not going to find the rarest of the rare planets wherever you go, but that's what makes exploration in No Man's Sky so freaking awesome. So how many planets are in this system? There's three. Have I seen the one with the ring on it? Is that the one with the ring on it? No, that's not the one with the ring on it. Okay, so where's my ringed planet then? I'll tell you what, let's fly to the lava planet and let's hope that falls into range, the other planet that I can't see right now. Let's go to the lava planet and check out what colour the lava is and see if it's interesting in any way, shape or form. What I like about the lava planets is sometimes you get some really interesting fauna there, like the butterflies that sort of land and stuff and then take off. And also, sometimes you get those little Dimash moles that we were talking about earlier. So we might be able to find one of them there. 
we go here for the fauna. Let's see if we can... Oh, look, it's a, it's a red anomaly, which are usually quite cool ones. There's a living ship. I must have an egg on me somewhere. Right, okay. Sadly, I, I'm not after another living ship. Thanking you. You can keep your IKEA lampshade looking ship. Thanking you. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the living ships, if you haven't noticed. I mean, I, I would. If you could upgrade them, I'd be all over it, but no. I was away my, one minute. Okay, nice one. Your school hours are a little bit a little bit short, aren't they? Which is which is a good thing, I guess. Awesome. John Labert. Okay, what was that? What did John Labert say? He says, show us the hyperdrive you've got. Okay, so my hyperdrive in this ship is 1,635, and it's a freaking fighter. Okay, let me just um, let me just land because I'm dragging my my ship around at the moment. Let's just um, land, and I'll show you what how I've done that. So here's my normal hyperdrive module, and then I've got an S class there. And you can see there it improves warp cell efficiency plus hyperdrive range is 208 light years. This one is 234 light years. So technically, I could scrap that and I could make it even better if I wanted to. If I got another one that was 234. And I've got another one there that's only 203. So those ones aren't all that great. But when I go into here, I've also put in the idiom drive. And then next to it, I've put these on. So that's 214, 235, which I think is my best one. And then 200, no, 239 is my best one. So there's two really good ones here. There's one other real good one out on the outer side. But no, I could actually tweak this and maybe get this up to maybe 1.9 if I was extremely lucky. But yeah, it's um, pretty damn sweet. Cap, there is an exploit to max your slots in your living ship. Yes, to make one of those high tier sort of hybrid type ships. Like um, there's a video, in fact, over on Professor Cynical's channel on how to do that. But um, yeah, I'm not... I don't really want to reskin a ship. Now, here we go, let's just jump on out. Let's have a look around. I know people have done it by accident. It's, it's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? There we go, let's scan the birdie my bird bird. It's done. Well, the lava here is very red. And we've got ourselves another bird. Let's scan that. Are all the fauna on this planet going to be airborne? That's the question. They're pretty cool. I like them ones. They're quite nice. They look a little bit like the yellow ones that we had on the last planet we were on. No, there are ground-based fauna as well. A roly-poly eyeball creature! How cool is that? Wow! That's pretty damn freaking awesome. Right. What the fudge? We've got another eyeball creature. Coolio. This is an optician's paradise, this planet. Heck yes. You think of all the glasses they could sell here, chums? I mean, you know, if, if you can't blink and you're on a lava-based planet, that's good. you're going to get burned retinas on a regular basis. That's unlimited money for opticians. Okay, what have we got here? We've got a bouncing phallus creature. Lovely. What have we got there? What the heck are you? What the fudge is that? Well, that looks like some sort of dodgy parasite, that thing. You see what I mean? The lava planets are awesome for fauna discoveries, people. So yeah, if you're after a gnarly planet for fauna, check out the lava worlds. They've always got something interesting on them. Yep, awesome. Right, well, so we've got a plethora of creatures here that we can start renaming. Hello, you! He looks like a giant mushroom or something with legs, doesn't he? He's pretty darn sweet. I'm going to call him... Libert. Libert. And instead of using your first name, I'd use that because it sounds more alien. Libert. Chikapow. Done, dilly done. We've got this one here. Now, this is a bit of an odd one. I'm going to call this one USAF because then people are like, what the fudge does that stand for? There we are. Chikapow. And now we've got this one here. Right, well, I'm going to call this one Bobby Maggie. <laughs> Yep, there we go. There we go, Bobby. Bobby. Because he bobs up and down. Yeah, no other reason. There we go, Bobby. <laughs> Maggie. Is it 1G? It is 1G. There we go. Then we've got this eyeball creature, which is really quite sweet. Let's have a look. I think I might call this one Bida. Bida back. Heck yes. Bida. Back. I'll do it as... Two words? Is it two? No, it's, it's one word. Okay, well, I'll just put a capital B there. There we are. Um, what else we got? We have got... Diddly-dee, diddly-dum. Oh, my John McNone. McNone. 
Heck yes. I'm going to call this one McNoun. Is he also in frickin' I? McNoun. McNoun. Sweet. That's a perfect name for him. Coolio. And then we've got this guy here. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Dimash. I'm going to call this one Dimash. Mainly because I don't think we're going to come across one of those little... Um, those little guys that pop them down, because they're as rare as freaking rocking horse turd, aren't they? Hey, look at that. I've put an S in there. I must have named... Re oh, I think a video that I've got unlisted. I may have spelt your name wrong, Damash Smash. I am sorry. Yep, Damash Smash. Kapow! Done, done, done. And then we've got this guy here. Ooh, very cool. Very cool. Let's have a look, see. Let's see who we can name this one after. Dilly, dilly, dumb. Come in. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, we'll call this one Oaky. There we go. He's got, kind of like got an Oaky sort of colour to him. There we go. Uh, Oaky. Pow! Done. Heck yes, you are. You're a beautiful bird. Look at that. That's the mash smash. Very beautiful. Yeah, lovely. Done. Dilly and done. Dilly done. Cool. Well, I quite like the lava planets. Yeah, they're all right for a quick visit, aren't they? You know what I mean? And I love it when you've got all these giant mountains and things. The photos that you can nab on one of these lava worlds is pretty darn sweet. Okay, it says, love you, buddy. Nice one. Well, thank you very much. Alexi X, nice to see you back in No Man's Sky. Yeah, well, I did jump onto Cyberpunk. And I must admit, I had so much fun on Cyberpunk. And I do like Cyberpunk a lot, but I've, I've done everything. I've done all the missions, I've done all the side gigs, I've got a load of the secret stuff, I've got a load of the legendary stuff, I've got all my crafting gear, I've even hit level 20 now on my ninja skills. So yeah, um, I've pretty much maxed it, to be fair, and I've completed it every which way to Sunday as well. I had a great laugh on some of Cyberpunk, and I know it's got a lot of hate, but I actually really like Cyberpunk. Um, I am planning to bring Cyberpunk back to the channel, but after the um, DLC drops, or we get some really decent updates that maybe fix a lot of... The you know what, I'm going to go and have a look at this icy planet anyway. It looks quite cool from here, so we're going to have a quick look at the icy planet before we jump anywhere else. Let's have a quick look. But yeah, hopefully, I've just started searching for all the tarot cards in Night City. Dutch, I enjoyed doing that, mainly because... When I found it, yes, I did. I got I got all of the graffiti, all the graffiti. Found it all, but I was ex I was also exploring the area. And sometimes the graffiti, I think, is placed there for a reason because sometimes you find something interesting around by where the graffiti is. So just take your time with it, enjoy yourself, take in the sights. The, the city is amazing, beautiful. Okay, so I'm heading down to the, what looks like an icy planet. I don't know which is ice and which is water. I don't know whether the water is blue. And the ice is yellow, or the, the, the water's yellow and the ice is blue. I think it's going to be... I have no idea. I still don't have no idea. Let's come down and have a quick look. Okay, so the water's yellow. Alright, brilliant. Lovely. Alright, so yeah, I'm in the middle of the sea. Let's have a look at the underwater creatures here. Let's see if there is a giant underwater creature. Now, I really am hoping that one day they add deeper oceans than what we've got now. I mean, you can see here, I've landed on the ocean side of the planet. And even when I jump in here, I haven't come across a, a really deep ocean in ages. To the point now that I don't even bother checking. Because I, I checked maybe, I don't know, 40, 50 planets with, the, with ocean sides. And this is about as deep as I find. I don't find massive, great, big chasms. Now, they've done videos where they've gone to giant underwater, well, underwater planets, but I have not been lucky enough to come across an underwater planet, so I have no idea what's going on there. It's a bit crazy. Oh, look, we've got a Scottish rod over there. And we've got a Scottish rod crab. Cool. Right, oh, coolio. Let's go into here. Yeah, I've, I have found free fauna. Are you going to list the fauna for me? Yeah, we go. That, that was a bit weird. Why did it not bring up the crab? It's because it's extinct. The Scottish rod on this planet is extinct. Now, in the patch notes, they said they fixed that. But obviously, I just scanned three creatures, and one of those is extinct. It's got to be the Scottish rod that I just scanned. I'm going to call this one Madfish Magpie, mainly because it's a fish, but it's also got some pretty mad colours on it. And black and white is a colour of a magpie. So there we go. Madfish Magpie. Chikapow. 
done. And then we've got this one here. Whoa! That one is really quite cool. I'm liking that. That's pretty cool. I'm going to call that one Lobos. Nice one. Cool. We're going to go with Lobos. Chick -a -chick -a -chick -a pow chick -a pow Done. Cool. Right, so, yeah. As far as ice planets go, it's probably going to be the same as any other ice planet. But I just wanted to jump in the ocean and just see how deep it was. And have a quick look around. But, yeah. The fish are very... I'm really hoping that soon they start um, bringing a little bit more love to the actual ocean creatures. Also cave dwelling critters. I would like to see a, as much variety as we get on land in the caves and in the seas. Because, yeah, at the moment it, it feels like they're a little bit dry, even though it's underwater, which is very not. But there we go. It would also be nice to see sort of like water droplets in caves. You know, you've got the stalactites and the stalagmites, where they're formed by water droplets. You don't really see that happening in the caves. It would be quite cool to see that happen. Okay, we have got an incoming transmission from our friends. Okay, here we go. Looting entity. That's a bit suspicious. Does he want to loot me? It's in his freaking name. I'm imagining he does. Dama Lasarak. It forces us to fight you. It forces you to pay. Please help us. Do as it wishes. This is you. You're blaming this on somebody else. You know what? I'm going to refuse. I'm going to refuse. There we go. Kill us. End our suffering before we end yours. Okay, fair enough. I can oblige. That was weird, wasn't it? That was really weird. Like they're being forced to actually attack me. You just sent one? One ship? I feel guilty as hell now. That, that was, he was on a suicide mission, people. Right, okay. Nom nom pizza. Whenever you're ready to mash. Nice! Bye, chat. Well, goodbye there, night penguin. Bye, bye, penguin. Night penguin, night penguin. Giant alien cave insects would be great. Heck yes, the Dutch. Definitely. Fire slash. They just need to change the water textures. That's good enough. Yeah, the actual water surface and stuff. I know that Ray Rod has done a lot of work on that, on, on his actual uh, mod. And he, he's done some wondrous stuff. It looks really cool on his mod. Oh, we've got like a turquoisey planet there. That's a, that's quite cool. But it's not uncharted. We'll go to another uncharted area. And we'll see if the uncharted area brings us anything cool. Um, there's another blue one there developing. Right, have I got some... I haven't got a filter on. Okay, so I'm still in the 905. There's a red one. Chikapau, and it's got water. Awesome, we'll go there. I think it's only got two planets though. Bad looks of things, chums. So we'll head on over here. We'll see if we can find something amazing inside the NMSA hub. I do like exploring the NMSA hub. It, it's a shame that that blue and red planet wasn't in the NMSA, or else I would have done a full-on planet review of that one. But because it sits just outside, I thought I'd just bring it to my live stream and not do a review of the planet. Star Bob! Heck yes, activated cadmium. Okay, nice. What are you over there? What, did, what, what planet are you? Stellar Corruption. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. We'll go to the Stellar Corruption first. We'll come to the Ringed Lush as something to finish up on. Because there are these only... There's only two planets here. We're going to look at both of these planets. And then that'll be for me, I think, people. John McNone. I would like waves and tides. Maybe a Nordic-type horn. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be pretty damn freaking epic and sweet. You know these really hot planets, like the lava planets I was on momentarily ago? I'd like to see geysers and bubbles. I'd like to see oceans that are actually boiling, you know what I mean? If the planet is, is boiling hot, then so should the oceans be. I think they should just be full of, like, bubbles and geysers and, you know, even steam coming off of them and things. That'd be freaking epic. And it's like planets that don't have any water, that have clouds. I'm like, how does that work? How? How is that working? Yeah, it'd be cool to have different cloud formations on some planets, you know? Because the clouds are pretty much the same wherever you go. It'd be nice to see more alien-esque clouds. Maybe I'm asking for too much. I don't know. But they managed to do it in Starlink, Battle for Atlas. They added some really alien clouds on that game. And that's really cool. The biomes on the planets in um, Battle for Atlas came across quite well. They came across really nice. Okay, so this planet is an odd one. Okay, so we've got Scarlet Rain. Sadly, we've landed on the dark side. Shall we go over to the light side? I wasn't paying attention. Let's go to the light side of this planet so we can have a better look at it in all of its glory. Let's go to the light side of this planet. Okay. 
Uh, oh, yeah, under ice as frozen planets. Yeah, yeah, to have ice shelves and icebergs would be freaking awesome. What do we got here? Oh, it's a living ship again, isn't it? Yeah, okay, cool. Let's just ignore that then. Right, we go this way. Out of the way, living ship. Right, let's go over here and let's have a look over this side. Yeah, so yeah, frozen ice shelves, icebergs, the floaty icebergs and things. And on the swamp planets, I would like to see giant lily pads with like um, that actually float on the water surface. So they've got big tendrils hanging down. We saw those. We saw those in the E3 trailers. Lily pads floating on the surface. Ray Rod has rendered them back in. He's actually got them in his mod, in his Hyperverse mod for PC. Um, which, if you join his Discord, I think you you can actually play on the mod. I think he's got it up and ra operational now. For his not for his Discord members, his Patreon members, I should say. Yeah, yeah, check him out. If you've got PC and you like running mods on No Man's Sky, check out Ray Rod. He's an awesome guy. Nicolio, Dutch 66. If they give us oceans, some love will be like the floating bases with space to land. One of them, oh, that would be cool. Yes, heck yes. I've just described an aircraft carrier. <laughs> you don't, you have, but I know what you mean. Something like Star Wars, where you know that clone planet that they visited in um, the Clone Wars or whatever. I can't remember the actual name of the planet. Somebody out there would know. You know, but this is this is a cool planet. This is one one that I would have labelled rarest of the rare. So this is quite a nice find. Normally, when you come to these planets. They've got all that sort of red, sort of crimson look, or you can only see one sort of colour. But this is really quite something. This is quite beautiful. You can actually see all the colour on this planet. And that is quite wondrous. That is, that's nice. It's got that sort of flow to it, hasn't it? Yeah. Wavy Davy plants everywhere. Very wavy Davy. Like it. This is a cool planet. Yeah, I'm liking this. I'm not seeing many fauna. It's not very heavily populated, or densely populated, I should say. Let's head on over here. Let's see what that other red dot is. Looks like we've got a bitey critter that's trying to come after me. Okay, let's scan this dude. Let's get him scanned. Righto. So we've got a couple of creatures here. Let's have a quick look what these creatures look like. Alright, just doing that thing again. There's, um... Okay, great. Yeah, let's go back into Discoveries. Yeah, there's not many on this planet at all. There's not many creatures to be have here. We call this one Kevlar Twinkie. Funny, the plants move like they're underwater. They do indeed, yes. Kevlar Twinkie. Now, Twinkies, they sort of last forever, don't they? And it is like they're made out of Kevlar or something. Yeah, they're just they're sort of like impervious to going out of date. There we go. There we are. Let's go for this guy. Wow, wow, he's a stripy kitty cat. <laughs> he's got the thing going with the legs again, where it's fused into each other. I called it the last one, Mr. Fusion, didn't I? So uh, let's have a quick look who we've got on the screen. Uh, protoons on my ship to land. Yeah, that'd be pretty darn sweet, wouldn't it? Heck yes. Uh, that's 66. Lost cities like Atlantis. Yeah, that'd be awesome to find something like that. We we'll call this one Mundalini. Uh, Mundalini. I, I can't really tie that in in any way, shape, or form, I don't think. Mundalini. Mundalini. Mm. Uh, Munda. L. I. N. I. So I had to double check that one. Yeah, let's uh, scroll up a bit. Oh, we've got Fry Slash. We've got, oh, I, I, I haven't got another creature. I'm sure I scanned more than two. That's a bit weird. Anyway, we're going to head on over to the last planet, which is the uh, Lush planet. What's this evil critter we've got here? Ah, you freaking bit me! Did you see that, people? You freaking bit me! Yeah, didn't know that the choo choos were fighters. Right, let's go, let's go, let's get out of here. We'll head on over to the lush planet now, chums. Let's go do that. And take them off. Awesome. Mandalini, 07 Captain, 07 Chap. Hey, <laughs> awesome. I'm glad you like your little naming there. Okay, let's, uh, let's spin this around, let's have a look, see if we can find another planet. There's one behind... no? Yes, there is one behind here. Okay, cool. We'll do that then, we'll fly around here. Let's go. Meow. I gave Sean a good dressing down. Did you? Over what? Let's have a look. We need a Nautica-style, really deep oceans, maybe larger sub to combat 
the larger creatures that can be found in very deep waters, heck yes. I've gave Sean a good dressing down over additional legs where they're not needed. Good shout. Good shout. I hope I hope um, he, he took it on board as creative critique because, yeah, some of these creatures, they don't look like they've been made for extra legs. Yeah. Beeble says, I've been lurking in and out. Heard Atlantis, so I had to comment. Hehehe. <laughs> Yeah, underwater cities would be quite cool. I know you can already find ruins and things. I know that they've hired a, a lady that's very good at making procedural cities. They used to have a chap on their team that made procedural cities. So you'd think if they've got two people or had one person and then replaced them with another person that makes procedural cities, you'd think that kind of does hint that procedural cities might be in the future of the build. So let's just see what happens. I mean, I, I don't want to sort of jump on the, the bandwagon of uh, procedural cities but then again I have seen people with mods that have made cities into No Man's Sky an actual thing. Now because this is Uncharted I can't find myself a um, trading post so I can't find landing too easy. It looks like I've come down on a watery side of the planet and there's a storm raging so I can't see where the land masses actually are because it's just covered in freaking cloud right now. All right. Well, let's um, let's just take a random stab in the dark and we we'll go over here. I think I can see a landmass under this cloud mass, a little mini island, perhaps. Let's go down there. Let's have a look. See, hi, Beeble, reminding us how good builder you are, making me feel inadequate. I hate you, Mr. Scottish Rod. Your base is a freaking ace. Don't sell yourself short. I mean, yeah, Beeble's are obviously better. <laughs> He's better than mine as well. You know, Beeble is an amazing base builder, but yeah. I mean, he's, he's a glitch builder, so what you can achieve with glitch building far outweighs what you can do without. And uh, I'm, you kind of mix your techniques, Mr. Scottish Rod, and I'm liking what you do with your base builds, to be fair. You know? I, I really like your base, Mr. Scottish Rod, so don't sell yourself short, sir. Um, there's different levels of base building, and yeah, it's just very hard to reach the level of glitch building without doing glitch building. Oh my days, this planet's beautiful. Look at this! Hello, LJ Green. Hello there, LJ. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, JL, sorry, JL. Sorry, that's me being a bit weird. Rod, you're a great builder, man. You build more functional bases. Yes, yeah, Rod's bases are quite interesting and quite captivating. When I say captivating, you get locked into them. Captivity. Yeah, they're captivating in different ways. So Scottish Rod, your base is a freaking ace, my friend. But yeah, Beeble's train that he built the other the other month though, that was insane, insane build. You know, there's good, there's fantastic, and then there's freaking insane builds like what Mr. Beeble does. Is that under the ground or in the air? I can't tell. I'm just going to scan. Oh, it's birds. It's lot. It's a flock of birds that has one marker. Okay, cool. Yeah, I know. It's my love and hate relationship, Beeble. Coolio. Normug, Beebs, we are the sausages. <laughs> yeah, you've probably been seeing over on Zane Street that there's a little bit of a sausage debacle going on. Where um, Zane says that Mr. Beeble loves sausage, and Beeble says that Mr. Zane loves sausage, and it seems to be a sausage war going on, if that's even a thing. Sausage fest. I don't know. I don't know the best way to describe it, but it's it's weird, but it's funny. So yeah, keep that going. Okay, Coolio. Oh, what the fudge are those? Flying turds! Let's have a look at these flying turds. Yep, they're flying turds! Nice! Let's go and have a better look at the flying turd creatures. Uh, where have they got... There they are! Hello, flying turd creatures! What the fudge are... I've not seen one of these before. That is weird! That is so cool. Okay, they both love the sausage and both have come to grips <laughs> with each other's sausages. Uh, who knows? That's a tug of war that I would not want to be involved in. Right, okay. <laughs> For fudge sake. Okay, let's head on over here. What a beautiful, lush planet this is. This is quite a cool system. Having those two, these two planets in this system makes this quite an interesting place. This is quite a nice area of space to end off on. Wow. Well, what a weird creature this one is. Cool, cool. Let's uh, scroll you up. Right, we'll call this one... Uh, I, I'm going to call this one JL. JL. Nice one. 
In fact, we'll put in the other bit. There we are. Zreen. I just named you after a flying turd creature. That's, but it, 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 it's pretty darn cool. There we are. I've not seen one like it before, so you've been named after something rather rare there. Oh, look at this. It's like a canary with a, like a mask on. How cool is that? Okay, the masked canary. I've run out of names inside my chat, haven't I? I might just have to call this one the masked canary if I can't see a new name in here. I think I've pretty much named a creature after every single person that's come in, haven't I? No, I haven't. Fry slash. There we go. Fry. Oh, I've, I've ballsed up there. It's F Y R E S. Freeze. Freeze. Lash. Fry slash. I don't know how you pronounce that. I've probably been pronouncing it wrong for ages and only just realised now now that I've got to spell the dang thing. There we go. Cool. Okay, and we've got the DK. Well, D Kingfly. Yeah, there we go. D Kingfly. Nice one. D. And King. Fire slash. Nice one. Nice one, Fire slash. Thank you for that. D King Fly. There we go. Chickapow. Done. Oh, we've got Day in the Life of the Yeti in the house. Hello there, Day in the Life of the Yeti. That's my friend Matt in real life. He has a channel. It's a strange channel. Basically, Matt, he used to live in the UK. He sold pretty much everything he owns. And now he's just roaming around in Spain looking for a business idea. So if you want to follow his daily vlog, which a lot of the time he's just rambling complete bollocks, Great channel. Go check the guy out. He's a great guy as well. I've known Matt for a great number of years. Good guy is Matt. Okay, so I'm going to call this one Yeti. There you go. Yeti. There you are, Matt. You are now in No Man's Sky, a game that you hate. <laughs> he has tried No Man's Sky a few times, in all fairness to him. Um, yet, yet he plays Elite Dangerous. He prefers Elite Dangerous to this. But yeah, good to see you here, Matt. And as you can see, this game has vastly improved, Mr. Yeti, Mr. Matt. So you might want to re-pick up No Man's Sky. It is pretty damn freaking awesome. I don't know whether you've got your PlayStation with you on your little travel over in Spain. But if you have, give it another look. But you're going to have to give it a bit of time before you get to these interesting sister yards. Yeah, Coolio. Awesome. Well, there we go, people. I think that's a good point in time to end off on this fantastic, fantastic... Well, thank you, Mr. Yeti. Anyway, you guys out there, you've been freaking ace. Thank you for joining me. And uh, I will see you on Thursday. On Thursday, I'm going to be doing the game that got voted for by my super members, which is Monster Hunter World, where I'll be hunting a monster. Yeah, we couldn't you Adam and Eve it. See you later, people. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. Okie dokie, and then off the broadcast. Thank you, people. See you later. Have a good one. Bye bye. Stay golden and all that shenanigans. Stay safe.